Hi, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Welcome to This Week in Baseball. Hi, I'm Tim Hudson. I'm Mark Mulder. And I'm Barry Zito. Welcome, Welcome to, to This, this week, week in Baseball. baseball. With three times as many hosts this week, we've got three times as many bloopers. George, working that button, it's gonna have a sore finger by the end of this day. <laughs> oh, my next one. Oh, <laughs> this is good, weird. Dad. It's the guys on camera over there. And what's so funny about a bird in the glove? <laughs> Here we go. Play. Rollin', oh, what a catch! Great play. Coming up next. of Major League Baseball. We'll be right back, folks, just after this. Turn me up. Come feel the joy of the last generation. I stand, they set their own kind of stands. Mm -hmm. Lay it out. You set your own kind of groove. Maybe you can't break your tomb. But I think that leave you can lose. Young. Ben, did you pack Mo's bag? Yeah. Are you sure you put it on the truck? <laughs> Every time we go on the road, something's missing. We go to L.A., I got no ball back. We go to Philadelphia, I don't have the bat back. It's almost game time, and Mo needs a uniform. MLB Authentic Collection, available at the Sports Authority. It is a crucible. It exists to test the best against the best, against history. Now, the game's greatest players compete in the summer's biggest event. The 2002 All-Star Game on Fox. Now the hosts of this week's This Week in Baseball. Mark Mulder, Tim Hudson, Barry Zito. Pitchers, Oakland Athletics. Combined last year for an amazing 56 wins. Athletics baseball, the boys are back. Their house, the net. Well, how about this Oakland threesome? Mulder, Tim Hudson, and Barry Zito. They got some arms for a while here, boy. It's a big three. Those guys have been awesome. You go out there and you see these guys throwing the way they do. You feel like if you give up two or three or four runs, you feel like you've uh, you've let the team down because they're so used to, you know, these guys going out there and getting their job done. As you can see, I'm not a big guy. I'm not intimidating uh, from, from stature out there. And I just kind of go out there and, and have to show people that I can go out there and I can be nasty sometimes. Got him swinging. There's a split finger from young Tim Hudson. Perhaps the best pitch for Tim Hudson. A lot of times when I'm, I watch film on me pitching, you know, I wonder, you know, who's that guy out there? You know, I get very emotional out there sometimes. You know. Hudson turned out the lights on the White Sox. A one hitter. When it's time to go, I mean, he he gets after it out there, and that's what's fun to watch. He's, a, he's probably the most competitive person on this team. You see guys going out there, giving the team a chance to win every time, and uh, you don't want to be the one that stops the uh, the rhythm. Huddy's a bulldog out there, whereas Mulder and myself, I think, are a little more mellow. Yeah, Mark was mellow enough to win 21 games last year and finish second in the voting for the Cy Young Award. He's one of those guys that, you know, he, he's, he's good at everything he does. He's a scratch golfer. You know, he shoots the hoops. You know, he, he's good. He's a, he's a cool daddy. He really is, man. I like the pressure, you know, being put in a spot where you got to win a ball game or you got to make a big pitch. Sweet suit, Ichiro. 
seen pitch some games where the hitters just had no chance. You know, you play catch with them, and this ball's rotating on a vertical axis. You know, so it's kind of doing this thing here, which you don't see fastballs rotating like that. You know, we're all friends and stuff, so we all kind of compete in a friendly way, and uh, you know, we all want to contribute as much to the team as we can. Zito, I, I don't know what he thinks about when he's pitching. He doesn't think about the game, so, I mean, and he'll tell you the same thing. I mean, he's thinking about going out that night or all his friends watching the game on TV. I just kind of like to be myself, you know. And if he wasn't a good pitcher, I, I think he, it'd be harder for him to be the way he wants to be. But, I mean, he goes out and gets the job done. Big curveball strike three. What a pick. As long as he pitches well, he can do whatever he wants to do, and nobody's going to really care. We feel like, you know, we can do something special here. Oakland has a tradition of good pitching, Vita Blue, Catfish, and guys like Raleigh Fingers. If we do do it for the next how many ever years we're together, I think that we'll be in that same kind of group. Next, an animated look at an all-star commercial. Here's Twip Notes. Today's superstars are today's real-life superheroes. And that's the theme behind Major League Baseball's All-Star Game commercial. We took a closer look at the superhuman effort that went into making it. You want to play up the characteristics like, you know, like they do in comic book superheroes. You want to play up the characteristics of the different players. Bonds, he's a power hitter. He's got extreme power, robotic arm, big, like, gun. Ichiro, he's the fast guy. Tornado, ripping up the ground. Piazza, he's like, you know, this super cool. He's at the plate, nothing's going to phase him, so he's like the ice man. The step one is, the, is just getting it down, getting the rough down, getting the energy and flow of the character down. Much like a good baseball team, Teamwork was essential to make the finished product come to life. Major League Baseball was, was, of course, a wealth of information about details on these drawings, and they also, of course, helped us to develop the players' personalities. You can see the finished product in about 60 seconds, and when you watch it, keep in mind what went into it. Kind of the challenge this whole thing was to kind of take Trevor's amazing designs, which are inherently in a 2D medium, and utilize them, incorporate them into a spot. Extremely collaborative process from like Trevor to me, to Tracy, to John, to Greg, all the way through. So everyone's kind of a creative director on this whole process. We have a great team of people at McCann Erickson at Major League Baseball that made this all come together into one great spot. We're very proud of it. Do you know who this big leaguer is? How about now? Well, here's a hint. The baseball skills didn't come from the father, came from me. Behind the scenes, it's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm, did I lock my keys in the car? Mm -hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. The rules have changed. Now there is no up or down. Introducing Mach 3 Turbo. Total comfort whether you shave down or up. A new anti-friction coating on all three blades. Plus a new strip releases even more lubrication. So even against the grain, you get less irritation and the closest shave. It's turning the shaving world upside down. The revolutionary new Mach 3 Turbo. From Gillette, the best a man can get. On July 9th, two leagues of superhumans, the best of the best, will battle to prove which league is greater. See all stars like Bonds, Johnson, Piazza, Aira, Saxon, Pedro, Ichiro, Jeter, and Sosa. It's a superhuman showdown. Watch the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, July 9th on Fox. Don't miss it. You and your shortcuts. I'm asking this guy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, look. It's Bubba. Hey, Bubba. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> Real loud drunk you got there. Hi, sir. Hey, how do we get back to the highway from here? Right, right. Thanks, Junior. There's no better feeling than that of a job well done. And nothing helps you do the job better than America's number one filter, Fram. Don't miss the crowning of NFL Europe's champion. 
Berlin versus Rye, World Bowl 10, today on Fox. Oh, goodness! Now, back to the hosts of This Week in Baseball. We've been fortunate here. This is the only clubhouse we've ever been in. It's almost like we're an all-American college team. <laughs> you know, it's like we're, we're still in college playing and having fun. And honestly, I think that's one of the big reasons why we're so successful. They keep it light, they keep it loose, and they go out there and just kick it. Dude, what no gold in this? Dude, what no gold in this? It's almost like a college atmosphere around the DAs. Adam, what is it? Is it whipped cream or is it uh, shaving cream? No, it's cream. shaving cream. <laughs> You're not even old enough to shoot. These kids are like 14 years old when they're done pitching. They go back and eat candy. I wouldn't have thought when I came up here that guys were 30, 35 years old. I mean, you know, they, they're speaking like eight-year-olds. You know, some of the stuff we talk about and maybe 12. And maybe 12, yeah. Big boys playing kids' game. The boys got Eric Dias with the bubble gum on top of his hat. Unsuspecting. Of course, every group has its ringleader. Hey, guys. I know it's a little weird. Just ignore him. Now he's done something. He looks a little bluer. I know it's cliche to have ball players dye their hair, but you know it's fun. No longer the Raven. He's gone blonde. Gotta get him to dye it A's green. He goes out and gets the job done, so he can do whatever he wants to do and be the way he wants to be. I don't think I'm more wild than any other guy on this team. I think that maybe I just let it out a little more. Kick it. Dance fever. We want to go to the highlights, but we can't. What is that? We there? can't. We can't leave. Kick it. Everyone on this team has got a little uh, crazy in them. We're getting in rhythm. <laughs> it's a long season, and uh, you know you can drive yourself crazy. I mean, you got to have some kind of outlet to, to relieve some stress. Who is that, Who is that <laughs> You'd be surprised how early a lot of us get to the park here, because it's either sit at your house by yourself or come here and hang out with all your friends. Huddy, show me what we're trying to get Kurt to wear tonight. Get a little slap in the wind. <laughs> you guys thought you the day you landed on the left field line? Kurt, look at him fly. He takes off on a dead sprint. The crowd goes crazy. He <laughs> has uh, got some wheels. Not a cameraman over there. I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> Might get one of those American money from video. <laughs> Big reason why there's no pressure on us is because, you know, it's like we're, you know, going into college dorm every time we go up to the clubhouse, and it's it's just great. Now, here's this week's All-Star Game update. Luis Castillo of the Marlins broke a record this week, one that stood for 80 years. No second baseman in history has hit in more consecutive games than Luis. The old mark of 33 was held by Rogers Hornsby. Now, you'd think that this would pave the road for Luis to the All-Star Game in Milwaukee. But right now, second baseman Roberto Alomar is the leading vote-getter for all National League infielders. What a play, Alomar! The American League, Alfonso Soriano, another second baseman, also leads all infielders. Alfonso Soriano! Now, voting is over in the stadiums, but you can still vote online at MLB or RadioShack.com. So get online and vote. Coming up... Dry Cell makes great music. Players make great plays. How do you have any room to get in there? There's no chance you make that play right there. It's incredible. No chance. Very tough play. Incredible.
live together? As roommates. In a two bedroom. In two beds, in separate rooms. They're like Siamese twins who are joined at their boring personality. We'll embrace this fall on Fox 40. In the heart of conflict. In the heat of adventure. In the excitement of the unknown. The wonders never cease. In the pulse of action. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Five times the adventure all week long. Weekday afternoon, starting at 4 on Fox 40. Once again, the hosts of This Week in Baseball. Out of the three of us, I've been the only one fortunate enough to grow up in this beautiful state of California. It's the luck of the draw in baseball. You never know whether you're going to play close to home or far away. In fact, there's a young shortstop some 3,000 miles away who had a pretty amazing rookie year. Where'd he grow up? Here in Oakland. They're talking about the Phillies' Jimmy Rollins. The focus of this week's Before the Bigs. Few players make the kind of impact their first year that J-Roll did. The Phillies shortstop had a sensational rookie season. One that included quite a few firsts. He was first in triples and first in steals. He was also the first rookie to ever host TWIB. And he made his first All-Star game. So, you think he got all these skills from his dad? The baseball skills? didn't come from the father, came from me. I was playing on a ladies softball team and Jimmy wanted to um, play baseball with us. And so we said, okay, but you have to clean up first. You'll have to go get all the balls that are out in the field. And he just thought that was the best thing in the world to do. So that's how he got started. The break is... The time Jimmy spent tracking down softballs paid dividends when he made the switch to hardball. So, yeah, genetics and a lot of practice help put J-Roll on the path to success. But we discovered his real secret when we paid a visit to his old stomping grounds, where a small courtyard was his field of dreams. This is where we grew up, these, this apartment building right here. First base was the corner of this uh, fence down here. This was second base, the back one. Third base was a tree. Me and a couple of neighborhood kids, we were just playing strikeout all the time. But, you know, when we threw and hit from our natural sides, no one could get anybody out. This was a single. You know, as it goes up, second was a uh, double. Third was a home run. To make the game more fair, Jimmy and his pals pulled a switch, one that impacted his career. We just decided, hey, let's do everything with the opposite side. And I just did that for pretty much a whole year, just hitting left-handed, hitting left-handed. It came to a point where... We were like, okay, we're tired of doing it this way because we were getting just as good as our natural size. And ever since then, I've been able to do it. As Jimmy got older, his dad took him to class at the big league level. Field trips to the Oakland Coliseum. We did go to A's, you know, I told him to watch the pitchers, watch the infielders. And Jimmy paid close attention, especially to his idol, Ricky Henderson. If we came home without telling him exactly what went on in the game, we'd be in trouble. So it was just like, you know, even though we didn't have him over our shoulders looking at us, we still went and studied the game. All this attention to detail became evident no matter where Jimmy played on the field. He was one of those kids who simply stood out among the rest. He was an all-star his whole life. He was always one of the top players in the nation. When he was eight years old, his first one to make him a 10-year-old team, the only eight-year-old. So it wasn't a shock to me. I was telling everybody he was going to do good. When Jimmy reached high school, he got the chance to play at the Coliseum. And after this home run, he did a little Ricky Henderson stutter step around the bases in honor of his hero. It took a lot of work and practice to make this dream come true. Jimmy? Welcome to the Bigs. Now, Gatorade presents Sweat It Out. As a two-time Texas Ranger, Kenny Rogers knew that no Texas pitcher had stolen a base since the designated hitter rule began in 1973. So last week, Kenny did something about it. He's running. going in there like a guy five years older, Ricky Henderson. He got a running lead. He said, the heck with it. If you're not going to hold me on, I'm going to take my chances. Well, thanks to interleague play, Kenny gets to test his speed again this week against Jason Kendall of the Pirates and Brad Osmus of the Astros. So, you think Kenny will make it two steals for Texas pitchers in the last 30 years? No sweat.
the seams. It's the splitter. No, it's the high heat. Hmm. Did I lock my keys in the car? Mm-hmm. Is that so, sir? Going for my Pepsi. Sammy, Sammy. The one liter big slam from Pepsi. More of the taste you go for. Turn to This Week in Baseball. The Real One Call of the Week takes another look at Castilla's streak. Here's Tommy Hutton and Len Casper of the Florida Marlins. There it is. The streak is at 34. Don't waste any time, Louie. Hey, and Billy got the card right tonight. <laughs> Outstanding. No second baseman in the history of baseball has had a longer history than Luis Castillo. Consider this, Rogers Hornsby set that positional record of 33 back in 1922, Tommy. Yeah, and he's also now the second longest streak of switch hitters. Pete Rose with 44, the National League record, the longest for a switch hitter. Next, a pair of very funny Rangers handle this week's How About That? Hey, I'm Gabe Kapler of the Texas Rangers. I play outfield. Kapler coming on, making a fabulous catch. Mike Young, second base, Texas Rangers. Michael Young with his fifth hit of the game. And this is, how about that? Matthews on the run, and he makes a sliding catch. Johnny Damon coming in. Oh, she's That's team. routine for Johnny. Yeah, that's absolutely. Nothing. Travis Lee. Lay out. Lay out. Give, oh, give, give Omar a taste of his own medicine. Yeah, exactly. Ground ball up the middle. Visco diving stop to his left. Gets up. Throws. Got him. This is exactly what we're talking about. We don't need to see any more, any more plays of Omar robbing guys of him. I've seen him do that to me too many times. The two on the Jimenez swing and a bounce with George first. Wide to the back. Hairston a diving stop. He turns and throws. And out at first is the call. Big time play right there from Jerry. How about that? 2-2. Two, two. Diving stop. What a catch! Would you want to dive on a turf like that? Good team. That boy can play some third base. Line shot, diving play by Edgar. He robs Sweeney. Edgar Renteria. No, it's Renteria. Renteria. Que bonita. Benny, Benny Agbayani, one of my favorite players right here. Sliding catch. What a grab by Benny Agbayani. Fernando Vina. Oh, my chicken on the field. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we're not golfing, but Fernando got a birdie. <laughs> Popped up, right side, foul. Todd Hundley. Oh, my. Great play. Look at oh. Jerry Manuel helped him out. Did he hang on to that ball? What a great catch. Oh, what an amazing catch by Hundley. This Week in Baseball has been presented by Pepsi. Pepsi, the choice of Major League Baseball. Well, we really enjoyed hanging out with you guys this week. Be sure to tune in next week. That's when Sean Casey, the man they call the mayor of Cincinnati, will host the show. Sean takes us to the site of the great American ballpark, overlooking the Ohio River, Cincinnati's home for the 2003 season. And as you might expect, Sean does more than just pay a visit. He brings the first taste of baseball to his new home. We'll get you a tryout or something. All right. Hey, that was great. That truck won't be there next time either, bro. Hey, wait a minute. Did you guys forget anything? Oh, yeah. And happy birthday, Twib. 25 years of greatness. Peace later. out. We'll see you guys see later. You later.